there are two SLAs that every single support team needs. The first one is time to first response, and the second is time to resolution. Let's break down and go over exactly how to set these up in Jira and how to make them super effective for your team. And at the very end, I'll show you a really quick way to report on these SLAs and get ultra valuable information from them. My name is Josh, I'm the CEO of Grid.io, and we've helped thousands of teams get more out of Jira. Now let's jump in and get these SLAs set up. The first thing to note is that SLAs are only available for Jira service management projects. They're not available available for Jira projects since they are not customer facing. So just keep that in mind. And there are alternatives that you can use within Jira, such as due dates uh, and more custom solutions for SLAs. But generally speaking, SLAs are really only used in Jira service management projects. So when you have your project open to get to your SLA settings, click on the more actions on the right side of your project and go to project settings. Next, open up the request management tab and go to SLAs. Here we have a few examples of SLAs that can be relevant for your team. And you really only need to set up two types of SLAs within your project. First is time to resolution, and the second is time to first response. The other couple of options that we have are time to close after resolution. This isn't really relevant since the issue is already resolved, and typically there isn't any kind of SLA that is required after something's resolved, but it's something to keep in mind if you did want to show this on the ticket. Then there's time to review normal change and time to review emergency change. And I'll show you why splitting up by priority like this is usually not a good idea and a worse way of implementing your SLAs by priority. So to create a new SLA, all we have to do is click the add SLA button on the very top. I'll name this time to resolution new, but I would highly recommend naming this just time to resolution and time to first response, because that's what you'll see on the ticket when you're looking at it. Next, we're gonna set up our goals. We're gonna be adding our JQL on the very left side to apply these two specific issues. Then we're gonna select a calendar and a target time. So if we're gonna be applying this to every issue in our project, regardless of the priority, regardless of the issue type, here's exactly how we would do it. We would leave the first field as default, all remaining issues. We'd select our calendar. Most teams operate in a nine to five, so I'll select that. And our time target for this SLA. So time to resolution, let's say that we want this to happen within 16 hours or essentially two days of a ticket being opened. Now we have a time to resolution of 16 hours or two days on a nine to five calendar for every single ticket in our Jira environment. Now I almost never recommend adding your SLAs in this way for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you're managing service requests and incidents in the same project, incidents tend to be higher priority than a general service request. And number two, you want to base these off priorities. So something comes in as a high priority, the SLA should be shorter than something that is a low priority. So how do we set up and define those goals individually? All we have to do is click this add goal button. So what we're going to do is click the add goal button. And at this field at the very top, we're going to define a JQL for the issues or work items that we want this to apply to. So I'm going to type in a JQL of type equals incident. So everything within this particular SLA is only gonna to apply to our incidents. And now instead of setting a target for all matching priorities, I'm gonna add a priority. I'm gonna select an option from this list and I'm gonna pick critical, which is the highest priority that there is, selecting the nine to five calendar and then entering a time target of two hours. So now we have SLAs defined for incidents with a critical priority with a time target of two hours. And we can keep going down this list and defining all of our priorities separately. So high, we're gonna define as let's say four hours. Medium, we're gonna define as 16 hours. So that's gonna be our two day target. And then something that's low might be 32 hours. We could also drop in something for all remaining priorities. That way, if something isn't triggered by this particular SLA, it'll just default to this one. So I'll drop 32 into this field. And now low priorities and everything else have a definition of 32 hours. We could do the same exact thing for service requests. I'll go ahead and add a new goal add a JQL of service request. Then I'll go through and map each of these priorities with their own time targets. So as you'll see, I left incidents as typically a shorter response time since incidents are typically outages or problems that need to be fixed almost immediately versus a service request, which typically isn't as high of a priority. So I'm extending these targets a little bit longer. Once your goals are mapped out and ready to go, you'll wanna set up some conditions. Conditions allow you to start, pause, and stop the SLA countdown. And I'll show you exactly why this is super useful. So for the start counting SLA time, you're gonna to wanna to select issue created as the first option. The second thing you wanna define specifically for time to resolution SLAs is a cleared resolution. 
So you could find that in the conditions and it's gonna be called resolution cleared. Now, the reason you want the setup is in case a closed work item gets reopened and the SLA needs to resume counting. And for the finish time counting, we're gonna select resolution set. That way, anytime a work item is completed or the resolution is set on that work item, the SLA stops. We also have one more option to pause your SLAs. This is a very, very useful condition for a few reasons. Let me give you a very simple example of when you would use this. Let's say a new ticket gets submitted by a customer. The agent goes into the ticket and requires some more information before it can be resolved. So the agent writes a reply to the customer and the customer doesn't reply for four or five days. During that whole time, the SLA is actively counting. And in this case, is gonna lapse before the customer even responds. This is gonna harm all of your metrics depending on the customers that are submitting your request and how responsive they are. So what we could do is add a pause counting time during a specific status. So let's say we set the status to pending or agent responded or waiting for customer and we pause the SLA during that time. So I'll set this to pause during waiting for customer. And the really important thing to note is that you'll want to set up an automation for when a customer responds. Now, in order for this to actually work effectively and count your SLAs accurately, you'll need to also set up an automation to automatically transition a ticket to in progress or waiting for agent or something similar whenever the customer responds. Otherwise, you'll be at the mercy of your agents to make sure that they're keeping track and changing the statuses automatically when a customer responds to the ticket. Uh, which is not gonna be great for reporting and tracking purposes. Now that our conditions are set up, the last thing is to select how we wanna display these SLAs, and you could either do date-centric or time-centric. I personally prefer date-centric, but it is totally up to you how you wanna use them. One of the most critical steps that I always advise is to add your SLAs to your queues. So when you're looking at a queue, I'll go into my edit queue, and I'll add in things like time to resolution, and I'll add in time to first response. That way these could be monitored directly on the queue and even sorted by these SLAs. Now, if we head back to the queue, you could see that the time to resolution is sorted by shortest to longest. And this will tell your agents who are looking at this queue exactly what needs to be addressed first. So rather than guessing or diving into each ticket individually, whatever's at the top of the queue needs to be addressed immediately. Last but not least, let's touch on the reporting. On the left sidebar in your JSM project, you're gonna have a tab for reports. There are gonna be some good out of box options that you could select, such as SLA met versus breached, SLA success rate, and feel free to jump into these, test them out, see how they work for you. But if you want to create something a little bit more custom, let me walk you through that. We'll click create report on the top right, and we'll give this a name. On the top right, we'll click add series. And for this SLA report, I'm going to want to pull in anything that is breached. So time to first response breached, I'll add this one first. I'll give this a color and I could also identify specific JQL to narrow this down to specific work items if I'd like. And now I have a report that shows me the time to first response breached, but I also want to see time to resolution breached. So I'll add one more series, time to resolution breached, and I'll give this a name. I'll pick a slightly different color to make sure I can tell these apart, and I'll click add once again. Now we can go ahead and create this report. When looking at it, we could select specific time frames, whether that's the past seven days, past week, past month. Uh, my demo environment doesn't have a lot of data, so it's gonna look exactly the same. But when I hover over this graph, you could see that I have zero time to first response breached and zero time to resolution breached. And that's ideally where you wanna be. I have a little typo there. Uh, and now I have a whole bunch breached as of this week uh, and I could drill down into this data below. So if I want to go into first response breached, I could click on this number and that'll bring me to a list view of all the tickets that have breached and I could dig into them individually if I'd like. So that was a full rundown on how to set up SLAs inside of your Jira environment. There's obviously a whole lot more that goes into setting up effective SLAs, effective reporting and automations to make these actually relevant. So if you want my team to help you set these up, feel free to hit the first link in the description down below to book a free consultation and see if we could potentially help you out.